Adam al Misri is an Egyptian ex Christian and a content creator. And for some reason, he's more interested in criticizing Islam than his previous religion. His recent video was about historical errors in the Quran. I love this type of videos because they allow me to prove Islam and to dismantle the claims against the Islamic narrative. Let's watch the clips and come back. So, if you are Muslim who could be offended by this video, I recommend you stop watching right now. I agree with him. If you are a Muslim and you feel like you get influenced by his videos, then you shouldn't watch his content. You should go back and gain more knowledge about your religion and work on growing your faith. So what are the historical errors in the Quran? Let me show you a few. When we read Surah Taha, Surah number 20, verse 83 to 88, we find it telling the story of Moses when he left the Israelites for 40 days. Then when he came back, he found them worshipping an idol of a calf. The Quran tells us who led the Israelite astray in verse 85 and again in verse 87. Adallahum as samari and the Samari has led them astray. We all know the story of Prophet Moses peace be upon him and the golden calf. And the Quran clearly claims that a Samari translated the Samaritan is the hypocrite who led the children of Israel into idol worship. I'm sure that he'll try to say that the Samaritans didn't exist at the time of Moses peace be upon him. If he does, then I have a clear response that any sincere person can accept. Problem is, the Samaritans and the city of Samaria never existed at the time of Moses. It wasn't even established yet. The story of Moses goes back to around 1400 BC. However, Samaria was never established until after the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel. The Samari could have never existed at the time of Moses. There are 700 years difference. But the author of the Quran didn't know that. As predicted, he's repeating Christian rhetoric against the Quran and using the Bible as a source for history. 2 Kings 17 verse 29. However, every nation continued to make gods of its own and put them in the shrines of the high palaces which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in the cities where they dwelt. According to the Hebrew, the word Shumronim, translated Samaritan, actually means the people of Samaria. And the Samaritans don't refer to themselves as Shomromin, but they use the word Shamarin. To make it simple, the Bible refers to the Samaritans with the word Shamromin, but the Samaritans refer to themselves as Shamarin. And this is the first problem with the biblical narrative. The Samaritans refer to themselves as keepers or observers of the Torah, but the Bible refers to them as idolaters. And the Samaritans themselves reject this association and make a distinction between their own ancestors and the inhabitants of Samaria. If we read the Samaritans, the earth earliest Jewish sects, their history, theology, and literature. By James A. Montgomery, the people called themselves by the ancient geographical appellative, Samarim, which they interpret, however, as meaning the observers, i.e. of the law. We conclude that the Bible using the word Shomronim says nothing about the origin of the Samaritans, because the word only means the inhabitants of Samaria. And the problem with Adam al-Misri's claim is that he assumes that the Samaritans didn't exist as a distinct ethnic group before the city of Samaria. According to the Encyclopedia Judaica, chapter 14, the Samaritans are the direct descendants of the Joseph tribe, Ephraim and Minasseh, and entered the 17th century CE. They possess a high priesthood descending directly from Aaron through Eleazar and Phineas. It means that the Samaritans are from the time of the prophet Joseph descendants, which imply they are also from the children of Israel. Then they were certainly in existence in the time of Moses, peace be upon him. So when the Quran says, Allah said, But indeed we have tried your people after you departed, and the Samari has led them astray. It is historically accurate, and Alhamdulillah we showed clear-cut evidence for it. And especially after the publication of Sefer Hayamim, the Samaritan Chronicle number 2, the fullest Samaritan version of their own history became available. And again it proves the Quranic narrative to be true. The Quran doesn't refer to the city of Samaria, but it refers to the Samaritans at the time of Moses, peace be upon. I hope I made this complicated subject easy to understand. And Alhamdulillah, I responded to the first so-called mistake in the Quran. Let's hear the second mistake and respond accordingly. In the Torah and in the Jewish traditions, there is a highly revered prophetess named Maryam. She is mentioned in the book of Exodus and referred to multiple times in the Talmud and is considered one of the major female prophets of Israel. She is Maryam, sister of Aaron and Moses, and the daughter of Amram. Yes, 
Maryam bint Amram or Imram is Maryam's sister of Aaron and Moses. She lived some 1400 years before Jesus and she's pretty big deal in Jewish traditions. She is a key figure in God's plan for his people. Similarly, in Christian theology, Mary, mother of Jesus, also Maryam in Arabic, is a key figure in God's plan for his people. She is considered a saint and the most pure among all women. Maryam, mother of Jesus, is also a very big deal in Christian traditions. Perhaps this is why the Quran's author confused the two Maryams, being the most respected women, one for the Jews and another for the Christians. But the second Maryam, Mary, mother of Jesus, lived some 1400 years after the first Maryam, sister of Aaron and bint Amram. The result is, well, the Quran confuses the two and calls Maryam, mother of Jesus, calls her the daughter of Imran and sister of Aaron. Is referring to chapter 19 verse 27 and 28 from the Quran. Then she brought him to her people carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented. O oh sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. And he's trying to claim that the Quran confused Mary the sister of Aaron and Moses with Mary the mother of Jesus peace be upon him. Because the Quran calls Mary the mother of Jesus peace be upon him as the sister of Aaron peace be upon him. So is this a mistake in the Quran? First of all, you are using the Bible and the Jewish scriptures again, as if they are a reliable source of information. You should prove the biblical narrative to be true, and then you can judge the Quran using it. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was asked a similar question. Mughira bin Shu'ba reported, when I came to Najran, they the Christians of Najran asked me, you read O sister of Harun in the Quran, where is Moses was born much before Jesus. When I came back to Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I asked him about that, whereupon he said, the people of the old age used to give names to their persons after the names of apostles and pious persons who had gone before them. So the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him clearly didn't confuse the two Marys and explained that sister of Aaron was a title given to Mary the mother of Jesus peace be upon him because of her pious and chaste ancestors. We can find the same thing in the Hebrew Bible. If we check Jesenius's Hebrew and Chaldi lexicon to the Old Testament scripture, the word achut, meaning sister, gives a similar definition. And sister can also mean one of the same tribe or people. According to the blueletter.org, sister in the Bible can mean sister of same parents, half sister of same father, relative of Israel's and Judah's relationship, beloved bride, of intimate connection or another. And the New Testament calls the cousin of Mary, Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, the sister of Aaron in a similar way as the Quran. Luke 1 verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. The Bible calls Elizabeth the daughter of Aaron, not because she's his literal daughter, but a descendant of Aaron, peace be upon him. In a similar way, the Quran calls Mary the sister of Aaron peace be upon him and the Quran uses similar expressions in multiple verses in the Quran and to the people of Ad we send their brotherhood he said "O oh my people worship Allah you have no other God except him will you not then fear him prophet Hud peace be upon him is called a brother of his people O oh, children of Israel remember my favor that I have bestowed upon you and that I preferred you over the world so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refer to the Jewish people as children of Israel it doesn't mean they are literally the direct children of Jacob peace be upon him and we believe we are the children of Adam peace be upon him but that doesn't mean that we are the direct children of Adam peace be upon him similar to Mary peace be upon him she's referred to as the sister of Aaron peace be upon him in reference to her descent from the lineage of the prophet Aaron peace be upon him similar to the children of Israel and the children of Adam in ancient Semitic culture, a person's name was often linked of that of a pious ancestor. And the Quran and the Bible both agree on this. So the Quran doesn't have a historical error. Let's hear his third so-called error. Surat Al-Qasas or Surah number 28 verse number 38 talks about the Pharaoh at the time of Moses. It says, And Pharaoh declared, O chiefs, I know of no other God for you but myself. So bake me bricks of clay for me, O Haman, and build a high tower, so I may look at the God of Moses, although I am sure he is alive. The first observation in this verse is that the author clearly did not know what he's talking about. 
The author of this verse believed that the ancient Egyptians simply built giant towers and high rises made out of baked clay. Well, if only he knew that they built using gigantic stones and that one stone in the Great Pyramids weighs about five tons, he wouldn't have mentioned baked bricks. I'm sorry, but it's you who don't know what you're talking about. You're claiming that Egyptians never used baked clay during the time of Moses, peace be upon him. Let's read the language of the Pharaoh's large handbook Egyptian, a concise Egyptian German dictionary. Look up to burn bricks. Just like this, we established the mention of the burning of bricks in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And this misconception about the Quran came from Andrew Vargo, a Christian missionary. I won't share with you the website because it's full of lies and deception. According to brick architecture in ancient Egypt, A. Jeffrey Spencer, a British Egyptologist, page 141. From the foregoing, it must be concluded that burnt brick was known in Egypt at all periods, but used only when its durability would give particular advantage over the mud brick. So to claim that the Quran got it wrong about the burnt bricks is just pure ignorance. Alhamdulillah, I believe I refuted this point. Let's continue with his last doubt. He then claims that Haman was the assistant of the evil pharaoh. Once again, confusing identities, borrowing the evil Haman from a different Jewish story that belongs to the book of Esther and making him a villain in the story of Moses and the Pharaoh. Again, the Bible isn't a reliable source of information. And the book of Esther that you're trying to use to judge the Quran with is regarded as a book of fiction. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 5, page 236, the vast majority of modern expositors have reached the conclusion that the book of Esther is a piece of pure fiction. The book of Esther isn't a genuine historical book for you to use to judge the Quran with. A man had various functions including being used in the title for various grades of priestly class. Aman or Amana was used as a title for a high priest, as well as an architect, which strengthens our case that Haman may be simply an Arabized version of the ancient Egyptian title Amana. The high priest Bachin Khuns, the high priest of Amun, was one of the great architects of ancient Egypt. The person of Bachin Khuns, who served Pharaoh Ramses II, fits very well with Haman in the Quran. And the high priest of Amun, Bachin Khuns appears to agree with the description of Haman in the Quran. And bear in mind that this information is just speculation and can't be taken as absolute truth. I made this video just to show how weak the arguments against Islam and the Quran are. But for us Muslims, it doesn't matter what historians are claiming. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran is the absolute truth. But even if we don't care about historians, for some reason they keep proving that Islam and the Quran are true and reliable. Nice. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more academic videos like this, let me know in the comment section. You can watch this video about why Muslims appear to be invincible according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.